Hey guys, we're gonna be doing a little bit of shop work today. My dad is working on bringing the 7220 into the shop. Just have a couple of things we need to work out on this tractor. I'm gonna try to get every piece of equipment into the shop over the next month or two. So for this tractor, one of the main things we wanted to do is replace a bunch of these hydraulic lines going up to the front steering. These are starting to wear out. They're kind of a little too long because when we got the tractor, the wheels were spaced way out to 90 inches. I think we should just put shorter hoses on here. So they're not tangled up like this. That's gonna be one thing. And then we also had some damage done to the hood. Not even sure how this happened, but might get the neighbor to weld this plastic for us, clean that up a little bit. There's also a wire in there for the GPS that the dog chewed through, so Dad's gonna get that one replaced too. Gonna drain the engine all out now. We'll get this filter changed. Realized I need to clean out these filters for the air cooling. I need to remember to do that a little more often. Also, this battery needs cleaned up a bit too. This battery's from 2018. Needed to charge it up the other morning when we started it. Still works. Don't really want to buy a new one until we absolutely have to because they're not too cheap. I got oil back in it. It's actually time to feed the cows now, so we'll work at these hydraulic hoses tomorrow. I can show you guys, made a slight change to the feeding here lately, nothing too crazy. I'm gonna start the milking cow batch now. So the last video I climbed that silo there, said that we need to feed the rest of that corn silage out of there to get down to the rye before we run out of the fruity cow in that bag. We have been getting all the silage out of the bunks for the milking cows, but now we're running this silo. Just first thing, we'll put 2,000 pounds in. We have a custom premix we're getting now with our soybean meal and minerals and everything mixed together. These bags are for the dry cows and heifers. Still adding some stuff by hand. For the main milk cow batch, there's nothing we have to add by hand. Pretty handy. We also backed off the triticale that's going into our ration to make sure we don't use through this too fast. So this is the ration that I'm mixing up today. I have it written out. If we were feeding more triticale than this. We'd like to get that up even higher if we grow more next year. 184 cows, we're gonna put all these ingredients in. First batch I did was the dry cows. I'm gonna back into the commodity barn. We'll get the triticale first and then all these ingredients.
I'm out at the barn now. I already ran 1,550 pounds out for the special needs group. And now I'm just doing the math. We always write down what we give every group, every feeding, so that tomorrow morning when my dad's mixing, he'll know what they got and he can make adjustments. Try to do the best we can to keep it evened out. So we'll give 2,750 pounds to group three. the feed out to every group except for group number one the reason for that is we add a little bit of extra grain to these cows this is the first lactation group so they're still growing still expecting them to make 70 80 pounds of milk average and so we uh, just give them some extra goodies get some corn and soybean meal there for them Our barn is nice, we have all these separate groups, but we feed them all very similar because it's a lot of labor to mix separate batches up. We're able to add some goodies for the first lactation group, but we're not doing any high-low groups or a late lactation group or anything with the older cows. In the future, I'd like to go that route. We could save some feed costs feeding our cows that are soon gonna be dried off a little bit of a cheaper ration. I showed you guys the ration there. That's a pretty expensive ration that we're feeding. Uh, we're, we're definitely a higher input dairy farm, expecting a lot of production out of the cows to offset that feed cost. A production goal that we've had for a while is seven pounds of components per cow per day. So that'd be fat and protein combined. We're talking about actual pounds of components. We don't really care about the fluid because we're not paid by the actual liquid and the amount of milk the cows are making is more of the fat and protein in that milk. So for simple math, 100 pounds of milk at 4% fat and 3% protein is 7 pounds. So we've been shooting for that to, to average above that. We've actually been at about 7 and a quarter here the last 4 or 5 months. I don't know what it is, our, our fat and protein percentages are higher than we've ever seen. I think other farms have been saying similar things. I don't know if it has to do with the crop year or what it was, but we're averaging about 92, 93 pounds of milk per cow, but 4.5% fat and over 3.3% protein. So we've been really, really happy with the production here the last few months. And uh, the cow health seems to be a lot better than it was a year ago at this time. It's really hard to compare farm to farm with milk production because everybody's costs are different and their goals are different. Generally speaking, shooting for higher milk is gonna mean better chance for profitability because you're, you're getting more out of every stall, more cash flow you have more pounds of milk to spread your set costs out over. Uh, we, we could be still losing money at, at high production. That's not out of the realm of possibility. There's dairy farms out there that make quite a bit more milk than we do, so it gives me hope that there's a lot of room for improvement. For me, it's not necessarily higher milk, though. I think we can save on feed costs. Like I was saying, a little bit about targeting different groups, saving uh, feeding late lactation cows, and I'm gonna park this mixer in the front of the special needs pen now. I still believe we have room for improvement with our production. Not necessarily the high-end cows that are perfectly healthy and everything's going well with them that they're gonna make more milk. It's more if we can reduce the amount of issues we have, improve the low end. I think that's where we could see better production. And the other thing is just having an older herd, having less replacement animals, pushing out older animals that are, if they're healthy and productive, they're gonna make more milk than a younger animal will. So. It, it's really herd health and the transition health, especially when they cave in, start milking. If we can get rid of as many issues as possible, I think I think that's where we can find a little bit more production and uh, general profitability. So I'm someone who believes that small farms can compete with bigger dairies if we have individual cows that are profitable and productive. And if we can try to be labor efficient on some level, I still think there's, there's room for a dairy like us in the uh, industry for a long time yet. That'll be it for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow.
Hey guys, next morning here, we just loaded up three calves and two cows to go to market. Got a nice rainy one today, so I'm gonna work in the shop a bit more. What I'm gonna do this morning is remove these hydraulic hoses. Yeah, you can see we got some fry rot on these hoses. These hoses are so long that the uh, they kind of rub up there on the frame of the tractor, because they're moving all the time when you're steering. Well, actually they're not moving. Yeah, this thing's moving back and forth and stuff's rattling around. You can wear holes into these hoses pretty quickly. I'm gonna have to make sure I label these really well. I guess if all the ends are the same, I just need to know all the different lengths. Trying to see how hard it would be to remember where these all go. I'm not sure the best way to manage this. It's actually going to be relatively easy to figure out where these hoses go again. Just because it's going to be the opposite. This line here runs to the outside of this cylinder, the inside of that one, and the other one's the opposite. So I don't know that I need to really mark where they go. I just need to make sure I get the right lengths made. Got all these hoses removed. Decided what we're gonna do is attach these elbows straight to the one cylinder so that cuts down on the amount of hoses we need. Just two over to that cylinder and two from here to here. Instead of six, we'll just need four. I don't know if that's how it's originally set up, but it kind of makes sense with the way these ends are. Just gonna measure these and make sure we get the right angles on the ends. I think we need some 90 degrees. to getting this battery cleaned up. So I just went to the neighbor, he made me some hydraulic hoses that should do the job. I did notice this one was supposed to have an elbow on it, and it doesn't, so not sure what happened there, but it's not quite right. Should have double checked that before I left. We'll get the rest of these on and see how it looks. I just went back to the neighbor, he's only two miles down the road, and he put an elbow on the end of this. We were able to use the same hose because this elbow piece is a little bit longer than the standard straight piece that was on there. So if this fits in here, then we'll be good to go. I got some of this protective sleeve as well to stick on this because it's just a chance it could rub on the metal in here. Alright, everything's attached now. Got this bracket back on. The hoses aren't touching any of the metal. Most of this stuff doesn't move here. The cylinders out here move, but these stay put. But this bar slides through the middle. That's the main thing that could cause these to wear. But that hose isn't touching it. Yeah, and I got this fabric on those hoses, so that'll definitely help protect them. Guess the last thing to do is to fire it up and make sure it steers properly. It's definitely way cleaner than before. Well, it works, but it turns the opposite way when I turn the steering wheel. Good enough for me. I think we'll just get used to that. You just got to make sure you remember to, to turn the wheel the opposite way. When you want to turn left, you got to spin it to the right and whatnot. But I would say it's better than it was before. No, I'm messing with you. That actually would have been very possible if I had switched these two hoses. Then it would have been the opposite. At first, it wasn't working, but that's because the lines were all empty. So once it got all pushed out through, everything was working. So this tractor will be ready to go once we get the hood back. I don't know when the neighbor's gonna be done welding that up, but shouldn't be too long. We're also getting that cab wire repaired. It's gonna get a new end put on it. We don't need to buy a new one of those. That'll be it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See ya.